Hi friends, Namaskar and good morning to you all. Welcome to Myra Education. I am CA Devang Kothari and uh, aaj, today we are starting a new subject for you that is the subject of costing. Costing is your CA Intermediate paper number 3 costing subject. Well, um, my today's session, today's session here is just to introduce this subject to you to make you aware what this subject is about and to cover certain basic concepts about costing yes assuming that look this subject the subject of costing is completely new for you why new because say subjects like accounts you might have done you might have started doing since your school level subjects like law also you might have started since your school level but costing subject is completely new for almost each and every one of you yeah so costing subject because it is completely new for you hence my today's session is to just cover certain basics about costing certain basic concepts about costing so that i can use that in all my remaining sessions yeah so starting with the name of the subject costing what exactly is costing kya hota hai costing but well as per your icai book as per your ICAI CA intermediate syllabus, your name of the subject is not just costing, your name of the subject is cost and management accounting. But okay, chalo, we will just consider the simple shorter name as costing. So, so cho, first of all, think that costing ye subject must be about what? What should be this subject about your subject? Mein aap kya well, if you just see the name costing, it seems that it must be about calculating cost naturally. Costing, so it is about calculating cost. But question is calculating a cost of what? Well, simple answer calculating a cost of the products or services that I am providing. So say for a business entity, for a company who is say manufacturing some products, say I am manufacturing this, this pencil, clutch pencil. Now if I am manufacturing these pencils, then for my company, the subject of costing would mean to calculate cost of this product. But the question is that why do I want to calculate cost of this product? Why do I wish to calculate cost of this product? Think about it. Kisi bhi company mein agar cost calculation karna, then why do they want to calculate cost of a product? Well, the first answer that maybe would come to your mind, the first answer jo shayad aapke dimaag mein aayega, would be that company will calculate cost of the product so that they can decide selling price of the product. Because when a customer will come to my shop, when a customer will come to purchase my product, the first thing he will ask will be that what is the selling price of the product. So, sabse pehle, I need to calculate selling price of my product. Chalo, that can be one of the main reason why I want to calculate cost of the product. Chalo, we will understand that with one example. So, look at this. <clears throat> Under this subject of costing, ultimately, I want to calculate cost per unit of my product and on that cost per unit, I can add some profit. On that cost per unit, I shall add some profit so that I can get the selling price per unit say for example i did some calculations many calculations kia and i found out that the cost per unit of this one product cost of one pencil after calculation it turns out to be say rupees 20 per unit now if i calculate the cost of this one unit as rupees 20 then on that cost i add some profit say 5 rupees and i decide selling price as rupees say 25 per unit so 
चलो कंसिडर दिस एज द बेजिक पर्पज ऑफ माई सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कॉस्टिंग द बेसिक पर्पज दैट वाई डिड आई कैलकुलेट द कॉस्ट मैंने कॉस्ट कैलकुलेशन क्यों किए वेल आई कैलकुलेटेड द कॉस्ट सो दैट आई कैन एड अ प्रॉफिट एंड देर फोर डिसाइड द सेलिंग प्राइज या लेट अस लेट मी से दैट दिस इज माई पर्पज नंबर वन रीजन नंबर वन दैट वाई डू आई लर्न दिस सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कॉस्टिंग चलो विल कीप इट टिल देर हियर अभी यहां पर ब्रेक लगाते हैं दैट दिस इज माई फर्स्ट पर्पज वन रीजन दैट वाई डू आई कैलकुलेट द कॉस्ट अभी कॉस्ट कैसे कैलकुलेट करना है हाउ टू कैलकुलेट दैट कॉस्ट दैट वी विल लर्न ड्यूरिंग द सब्जेक्ट थ्रू आउट द एंटायर सब्जेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दैट हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द कॉस्ट वॉट ऑल अदर प्रॉब्लम विल आई फेस वाइल कैलकुलेटिंग दैट कॉस्ट एंड ऑल बट बिफोर आई गो ऑन let me also differentiate this subject from certain other subjects that you might have done ab dekh sakte hain yahan pe the name of my subject as per icai book icai has named the subject as cost and management accounting if they have named the subject as cost and management accounting or in shorter way cost accounting this may be the name uses the word accounting Now you have already done accounts subject, normal accounting का subject आपने किया है You tell me that there are certain differences between your routine accounting subject and my costing subject. Accounting subject you have learnt since starting since your school days, maybe 11, 12 से ही आपने शुरू कर दिया accounts का subject. CPT also you learnt accounting. Those of you who are direct entry people in your graduation BCom also you learnt the accounts subject. now let us call that account subject as financial accounts while this subject here it is called as cost accounting i repeat your accounting subject jisme you make your balance sheet pnl cash flow statements and all all that let me name that as financial accounting while what i learned here in this subject is now cost accounting so my first question is how is financial accounting subject different from this cost accounting subject how is your subject of financial accounting different from my subject of cost accounting look this difference is not necessary for you to memorize today's session mai bola aapko this is just basic introduction to make you aware that ye subject kya hai so i don't need you to memorize the differences that i am now giving you but samajhne ke liye bas suno ek baar financial accounting subject aap banate ho balance sheet pnl and all Why do you make that? Why do you make balance sheet? Why do you make P&L? Or, chalo, better question: For whom do you make balance sheet, P&L, and all the financial statements? Is ke liye banate ho? Is ko dikhana hota hai? Well, answer is that your financial accounts that you make, balance sheet, P&L that you make, you are making that balance sheet, P&L for presenting your position to your investors. इन्वेस्टर्स जैसे शेयर होल्डर्स इन्वेस्टर्स जैसे ऐसे लोन गिवर्स यस मनी लेंडर्स एंड ऑल सो यू मेक योर बैलेंस शीट पी एन एल यू मेक योर एंटायर फाइनेंशियल अकाउंट फॉर प्रेजेंटिंग योर पोजिशन टू द इन्वेस्टर्स और इन जनरल फॉर प्रेजेंटिंग योर पोजिशन योर फाइनेंशियल पोजिशन टू आउटसाइडर्स वाइल दिस कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग सब्जेक्ट आई गिव यू दिस वन एग्जाम्पल योर लुक एट दिस एग्जाम्पल एंड टेल मी do i need to show this calculation to my shareholders do i need to show my shareholders that how did i calculate my selling price here no calculating selling price is internal decision of the company management decision it is the job of the company management this calculations is never to be presented to the shareholders shareholder is not interested in this shareholder is just interested in profits and shareholder is interested in the fact that uske investment pe how much profit has the company earned well that is your financial accounting part but this calculation here this comes under costing or cost accounting so what is the difference major difference between these two subjects now listen cost accounting is not for presenting my position to outsiders in fact whatever such calculations we do in cost accounting any such calculations that we do in cost accounting it is for what purpose it is for 
my own internal calculation it is for my own internal decision making yes my entire subject of causing is purely for internal own decision making this is my difference number one secondly in your financial accounting subject when you make balance sheet pnl well when do you make the balance sheet pnl beginning of the year or end of the year when do you prepare balance sheet when do you make the pnl and all well naturally your financial accounts are prepared at the end of the year you make the balance sheet you make the you make the trial balance first then pnl then balance sheet all that you do at the end of the year or at least end of the period while in cost accounting again looking at the same example so when should i do this calculation when should i decide this selling price do i decide this selling price at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year think about it can this selling price calculation be done at the end of the year no why not well obviously not think about it selling price is something that i should decide first in fact before i start my business before i start selling the product first thing i should have decided is the selling price why because when a customer will come to my shop when a customer will come to my shop the first thing that he will ask the first thing that the customer will ask will be that what is the selling price can i tell the customer that buy tobi goods leja you take the product right now i will tell you selling price at the end of the year is that possible obviously not customer will first ask me what is the selling price i should have decided the selling price first first meaning say beginning of the year so my reason my difference number 2 is that financial accounting is done at the end of the year cost accounting like this is done when cost accounting is done at the beginning of the year but then ek aur problem which will be my difference number 3 listen carefully if cost accounting is done at the beginning of the year well at the beginning of the year do i know what will be my cost at the beginning of the year do i know that cost per unit kya hoga well obviously not i will get to know my cost per unit only after producing at the end of by the end of the year so how will i do this calculation at the beginning of the year how will i do this calculation at the beginning of the year think about it well that is why my difference number 3 is this they go in case of financial accounting whatever balance sheet pnl i make that that pnl that balance sheet will contain details that are actual cost that are actual details historical cost concept as a naam tha as a concept tha when you had started learning accounts so your financial accounts contain the cost details which is historical cost concept matlab actual cost while cost accounting mein whatever cost calculations i do here this entire cost calculations everything that you see over here will be purely yes will be purely based on estimates so cost that i write here will be estimated cost plus estimated profit will give me estimated selling price per unit my entire subject of costing every chapter that we do in the subject of costing everything is purely estimates now you will ask me that ki sir if everything is based on estimates my entire subject is based on estimates isn't it possible that these estimates might go wrong yes is it possible definitely it is possible estimates might go wrong then you'll ask me that sir if estimates will go wrong then why to make these estimates if estimates go wrong then what to do well if estimates go wrong then what to do well that is the reason why we have an entire subject about it that is exactly what we will be learning in my entire subject of costing we will be learning how to make these estimates we will be learning that how to use these estimates in our decision making in our planning work and we will be learning that when these estimates go wrong then what to do how to find mistakes and how to improvise on that estimates in the next year but ultimately yes it is definitely necessary to make these estimates because look as you see in this example without making estimate how will you even plan for the next year 
how will you even decide selling price for your product so ultimately yes it is necessary to make that estimate in short Repeating that again, that total three main differences, I covered up three differences between your financial accounting subject and my cost accounting subject. And that also I'll now cover in the reverse order. Last difference that we did just now is that your financial accounting is based on actual cost while cost accounting, all these workings are based on estimates. Second difference we had done was that financial accounting is done at the end of the year. While cost accounting, these workings are done at the beginning of the year. And the first difference, most important difference I had told you was that financial accounting, you make your balance sheet PL books of accounts. For what purpose? Purpose was for presenting that to your investors, presenting that to your outsiders. While cost accounting is for what purpose? Cost accounting is for internal decision making purpose, internal management, internal decision making purpose. Now this difference, this very first difference was the most important difference. In fact, based on that difference, I now give you another conclusion. Think about it. If financial accounting is for presenting things to outsiders, that is the reason. That is why in financial accounting, there are so many rules and regulations to be followed. The government has given so many rules and regulations that you have to follow while doing that financial accounting. You have to follow accounting standards. You have to follow Companies Act. You have to follow, say, Income Tax Act, GST regulations. So many such rules and regulations have been given by the government for you to make the books of accounts. Why? Think, give it a thought. Why are there so many rules and regulations given for making these books of accounts? Well, the reason is because it is to be presented to outsiders. Now, if the government had not made any such regulations, then you will, then you might make your books of accounts in a wrong way. You might show wrong picture to the investors. Say, for example, investor wants to know what is the profitability of your company. Well, if there were no rules and regulations, you might make a profit and loss account that shows very good profit, which is fake. You might show fake profit, wrong profit in your PL just to impress the investors. But that will be ethically wrong for the investors. Hence, the government has made these rules and regulations that you have to follow these rules and regulations while making the books of accounts so that you do not fool the investors. But in my costing subject here, for such calculations here, there are no rules and regulations applicable. There are no laws no standards, nothing applicable in my costing subject. Why? Well, now you can see the answer. Why? Why? Because this cost calculations is not for presenting things to outsiders. I am never going to show this to my shareholders. This is for what purpose? This is for my internal decision making purpose. Well, that is why if it is for my internal purpose, why would government make regulations for that? No, you don't need to follow any regulations. Government does not need to give you any rules and regulations for costing subject because this is for internal decision making purpose. It is like, for example, say, <clears throat> imagine when you uh, when you write some exam, 100 marks ka paper it was. Say, for example, out of 100 marks paper, what if, just for example, you were able to write only 60 marks paper? Maybe because of shortage of time or maybe because you did not know the answers. If you are able to write only 60 marks paper, of course, don't worry, that will not happen in costing subject. You will be writing full 100 marks. Trust me on that. But just for example, say in any other subject, if you write only 60 marks paper, then when you come home, your parents will ask you that, Ki beta, how was the paper? You will tell your dad that, Ki papa, paper was nice. I have written good. Dad will ask you that, how many marks did you write? You will tell him. That no, I've written good, I've written full 100 marks. You might lie to your parents saying that yes, you have written full 100 marks paper. Jood bolenge shayad because when you are presenting information to outsiders, you will want to show a very good picture. You will try to show as if there is no problem. But for your internal satisfaction, for your own internal satisfaction, will you tell yourself that you have written full 100 marks paper? No, you know the reality. You know the reality that you have written only 60 marks paper. You will definitely not lie to yourself. When somebody else asks, you might lie, but to yourself, you will not lie. 
same thing applies over here financial accounting when you are presenting things to outsiders companies might lie right jhoot bolenge to show wrong picture now to prevent that government gives rules and regulations but in my costing subject there is no such need to give rules and regulations because anyways this is for my internal decision making why would i lie when i have to estimate for my own decisions why would i write the cost per unit wrong over here if i write wrong cost per unit then i will have wrong selling price and ultimately my profits will then be affected do you understand that so conclusion is that yes in my subject of costing there are no rules and regulations applicable only thing applicable now listen to this only thing applicable in my subject here is plain and simple logic my entire subject of costing is very very logical pure and simple logic is all i need from you i don't need your memory power i don't need the memory part of your brain i need the logic part of your brain the entire subject is very logical very beautiful it is my favorite subject in fact uh, in fact i wish that by the end of my sessions i don't want you to just learn the subject of costing but by the end of my sessions i would wish that you will fall in love with this subject because it is my opinion that if you fall in love with the subject you don't need to give more efforts in the subject your a uh, subject will come to you automatically the only thing that i need from you in this subject is to apply pure and simple logic it is like like solving puzzles the questions of costing that we solve it will be almost like solving puzzles think about it when you solve some puzzles you get some puzzles on whatsapp you get you keep getting that day in and day out now when you get some puzzles on whatsapp you try to think of an answer do you try to remember what was the answer or you do you try to think of a fresh answer yes you try to think of a fresh answer when you solve puzzles your logic part of the brain starts running and you try to think about a fresh answer well that same fresh approach is what i need from you while solving questions in costing while solving every costing question i don't want you to remember that how to solve rather i need you to have a fresh thinking that how to solve this right now instead of remembering an answer i need you to create an answer that is exactly what i expect from you in this subject look i'm telling this to you right now because uh, <coughs> because say most of you you are very obsessed with accounting subject yes you all love the account subject financial accounts and uh, you have been learning that subject since your school days 11th standard 12th standard maybe even graduation you did cpt mein you did so you all are obsessed with account subject and that is natural because well that is the reason you have taken commerce subject commerce as a course uh, career but now for this subject i need to first change your mindset i am telling this to you now because first thing i need to change your mindset those of you who are obsessed with accounts subject i need to remove that accounting mindset from you and put you into the costing mindset i will keep repeating this whenever required later on in some topics because i need you to clearly differentiate financial accounts is a different subject cost accounting is a different subject don't mix them up don't mix them up because these are the three main differences that i have told you here at certain places my treatment in costing might be different than the treatment of cost in accounting subject well the reason is because these subjects are different my subject of costing requires pure and simple logic in fact uh, just like i told you it's like solving puzzles occasionally during our sessions wherever uh, related i might give you puzzles in class yes during my class i might give you some puzzles i need you to think of those puzzles that is just for you to practice it is just to uh, switch on the logic part of your brain which is generally switched off ca students you keep on memorizing everything so that logic part might be switched off i'll give you some puzzles in between just to switch on that logic part of the brain that will help you uh, say revive your logical reasoning part in the uh, subject anyways so that is what i expect from you in this subject but chalo further on before going on with the content part here let me also tell you about the books that you have got well 
and the books that i have given you for this subject it covers the entire subject practicals as well as theory yes your subject also has some small weightage of theory that also i have given in the book but this book that i have given trust me it is exhaustive nothing else will be needed beyond this book this book covers icai material it covers all the icai questions and theories it covers even past exam questions and all it covers anything and everything that is needed for this subject of yours it is my challenge that if you do this book then for the exam there will definitely not be anything beyond this book there will be definitely not be there anything in the exam which is not from this book i don't say that the questions will come exact same but but the concepts will be still the same yes so this book is the only thing that i need you to study in my subject now you might some of you might say that the book is pretty huge yes it is a little big book let me also justify why is the book so big well in every chapter i have covered two parts in every chapter there are two parts in the book you can see one will be class work one will be home assignment and by the end of the book i have given some theory topics yeah now in every chapter the class work portion will be discussed in class whenever i start any chapter i'll start with some basics some concepts some theories formulas explanations logic and all and then we will solve every class work question in class right now and then home assignment questions will be for your self practice of course out of the home assignment questions also certain questions i will be discussing in class out of the home assignment questions some of the questions which have some new concepts or new things to learn that home assignment questions also yes i will be discussing in class yes so that will be how we will be conducting our sessions and every solution every home assignment question given in the book is given with a solution plus that solution that i have given it is not copy paste from any icai book every solution given in your book has been specially designed by me has been type, typed and designed specially by me so that it will be exactly as per our classroom method plus in every question wherever required i have also written my classroom explanations over there also in certain chapters i have given you some list of rules a list of principles kind of summary notes for the chapter by the end of the chapter that will also help you in understanding the chapter better so i'm just telling you this because by the nearing of the exam many of you might think of studying various other books well i don't mind that but at least for my subject it is not needed if you wish to do any other books then first finish this book then you can go for other books if you need but trust me it will still not be needed this book is exhaustive enough for you to score 90 plus in my subject of costing okay then so starting with the subject of costing now well uh, my today's session will be covering up only certain basics basics that i need you to know before starting any particular chapter in the subject so this first session i'll not be starting any specific chapter but i'll be covering up certain basics certain background certain terms certain words that you need to know before we start learning the subject now i started here by showing by showing this example where you learned that uh, why do we have this subject of costing what is the purpose for this subject well one purpose of the subject you saw over here was that i calculate the cost so that i can add a profit and decide a selling price this is my first purpose and in fact i will say this is my primary purpose most important purpose most common purpose of the subject of costing but this is not the only purpose this is not the only purpose why should i calculate the cost because look here i said that i calculate cost so that i can add a profit and decide a selling price but tell me is it possible that in every industry they can calculate selling price like this is it possible that in every industry i have the option of deciding my own selling price isn't it possible that in some cases i do not have an option of asking whatever selling price i want i do not have an option of deciding my own selling price i am not a price maker in some cases i am a price taker in some cases i have to accept whatever is the market price tell me in what case that would happen well you might have learnt that in your cpt or in your uh, say school days and all i'll just say you might have learnt that in your childhood 
yes for me everything that you did before intermediate was your childhood so you might have learned that in your childhood in your uh, say microeconomic subject it's called as perfect competition yes so if i am into an industry where there is perfect competition then i don't have the liberty of deciding my own selling price then why should i calculate cost so in that second situation in that second situation i say that selling price is already fixed fixed by whom fixed by the market market forces of demand and supply i don't have to decide my own selling price i have to accept whatever is the market selling price so if the selling price is already fixed then why should i calculate cost well then i should calculate cost so that i can identify my profit and then based on this profit i might want to take some decisions i might decide whether to continue selling this product or not i might decide whether to start selling another product with this or i might want to reduce my cost after seeing that the profit is very less so for various such decision making still i will need to identify my cost so as of now with this example i give you two main purposes of costing but these are not the only two purpose there will be some more purposes of costing hence the first thing that i cover in my basics is the purpose of the subject of costing now look whatever i explain in class whatever i write on the board i need you to copy down in your books so please keep your book open you copy down everything that i mention on the board because that will help you recollect the subject later when you study again yes right now i have already written this example this you start writing plus i am also writing some more things below copy that then i will explain yeah so first you copy this first purpose is to determine selling price if the profit is fixed we already did that second purpose to determine profit if the selling price is fixed well this was the second purpose that i showed you but sort of these are not the only two purpose now i give you something new third purpose third purpose cost control and cost reduction and fourth purpose simply decision making now the first two purposes i already explained but the purpose number 3 here is very important these two terms cost control cost reduction will be required at many places in our subject certain chapters in our subject are based on cost control cost reduction so first let me explain what are these two terms plus it is one of the most important theory in your costing subject repeatedly asked in the exam that explain what is cost control cost reduction difference between cost control cost reduction so listen now if you see both the words doesn't both the words appear to be similar like both of them indicate what both of them indicate like decrease in cost cost ko control karna ya cost ko reduce karna in any case it indicates that aapko cost decrease karna hai but well there is one small difference over here think about it with one example chalo look 
at most of places i'll keep giving you lots of examples examples is how you will understand and remember my concepts say in my initial example here i had estimated my cost per unit as 20 now this was my estimated cost per unit let me write that again here my estimated cost was 20 per unit but when did i make this estimate i made this estimate when at the beginning of the year i made this estimate at the beginning of the year but then by the end of the year isn't it possible that by the end of the year i came to know actual and my actual turns out to be different yes it is very much possible i already told you that that actual might be different from estimate estimates might go wrong so say by the end of the year if my actual turns out to be say 25 now this shows that my estimate has gone wrong okay it might be possible now what to do well now what i need to do is called cost control yes ultimately cost control means to decrease the cost but listen now decrease which cost cost control means <clears throat> to decrease my actual cost and bring it down till the estimate Cost control means to decrease that actual cost and bring that down till the estimate. And how to do that? Well, if I want to decrease my actual cost and bring it down till the estimate, first question, can I do that now in this year? No, because this year has already ended. And in this year, you have already incurred the actual cost. Actual is the cost that is already incurred. Now, can you decrease that cost? No, but you still need to study that actual cost see where did you go wrong find out the reason why you spent five rupees extra so that next year you be more careful so that next year you be more careful next year you avoid those mistakes this is called as cost control so listen to the definition i define like this cost control means to control my actual cost and bring it down till the estimate Cost control means to control that actual cost and bring it down till the estimate. And it is done how? It is done by studying that actual cost, studying where did I go wrong, studying that what mistakes did I do. And next year you prevent those mistakes so that next year your cost tries to remain within the estimate that is called as cost control. It is like for example, Say you appear for an exam again and uh, 100 marks ka paper and say out of 100 marks you had written only 60 marks i told you and out of that 60 marks you were very confident that 60 marks you have written very well <clears throat> you expected that out of that 60 marks that you have written you will score full 60. so you expected a score of 60 out of uh, 60 marks out of 100 so your estimated marks your estimated marks you had expected was 60 but when the paper is checked and given back to you when you see the uh, corrected paper maybe in the corrected paper actual marks that you got just for example turns out to be only 50 now if your actual marks turns out to be only 50 so does it mean that once you get the paper you saw that it is only 50 TK you will throw the paper away will you do that no what will you do when you get the corrected paper well when you receive the corrected paper you will see the paper you will see where did you go wrong you'll try to find out the mistakes that you did so that you can prevent the mistakes in the next time so that you at least prepare that topics better in the next exam that is exactly what is like cost control yes so cost control means to control my actual cost and bring it down to the estimate while cost reduction is something more advanced listen to this cost reduction means to bring this estimate further down cost reduction means to bring that estimate further down say let me call this estimate as estimate one now i want to bring that estimate further down to estimate two According to my plan, my estimated cost should be 20. But now I want to bring that estimate further down to say 18. 
then this decrease when i try to decrease my estimate further down that decrease is called as cost reduction the question is why would i do that well simple example say currently my estimated cost is 20 Bulls are actual for the time being. Chalo, my estimated cost is 20. Add a profit of 5 and I am selling the product at 25 per unit. Now, what if in this situation, there is a new competitor who enters into my industry and starts selling this product at a much cheaper price. Say for example, I was manufacturing and selling these pencils. And for example, there is a new competitor who has entered this industry selling the same kind of pencils say Mukesh Ambani say Mukesh Ambani entered pencil manufacturing business Mukesh Ambani enters into any band, any damn business in the country almost Reliance Industries is such a huge group they produce so many things so nothing can stop him from entering this industry say he starts manufacturing these pencils under the brand name say Geo Pencils you know, if Mukesh Ambani starts selling these pencils under the brand name Geo Pencils. Now, you know what strategy Geo has always implemented. They have implemented the strategy in telecom industry that they will sell the services at a very low price. So if Geo Pencils has started selling pencils in my industry, maybe they are selling pencils at a selling price of say 20. Now imagine if Geo is selling at a price of 20, for me 20 was the cost. If Geo is selling at 20, no option. I also need to bring my selling price down to 20. I have to bring my selling price down to 20 only. Why? Because otherwise my customers will start buying from them instead of me. So what I need to do is now I need to bring my selling price down to 20. But if I just start charging 20 selling price, then I will not earn any profit because my cost itself is 20. So if my selling price now I need to keep at 20 then I will want I will want to reduce my cost also maybe not reduce it to 15 but at least I will try to reduce it till say 18 look when I did not face any competition I was charging full 5 rupees profit good profit but now that there is very tough competition here maybe I'll try to cut down my profit and I'll also try to cut down my cost. So after this, even two rupees profit, I might be happy with. But even for that two rupees profit, I need to bring my cost down from 20 to 18. Well, this decrease in my estimate is called as cost reduction. Now you tell me, think about it. How should I do this cost reduction? How will I plan to do this cost reduction? Can I do this cost reduction by preventing my mistakes by say, preventing the wastage of material by preventing inefficiency of labor no look wastage of material inefficiency of labor all these are my mistakes i cannot decrease my estimate down by preventing my mistakes why not because this 20 was not actual it was estimate and if this was estimate then this estimate did not have any mistake at all look by preventing mistakes, I can come from 25 to 20. Because 25, 5 rupees extra, I incurred because of some mistakes. By preventing mistakes, I can come back to 20. But from 20 to 18, if I want to go, I cannot do that by preventing mistakes. For going from 20 to 18, for going from that 20 to 18, I need to think of something else. What something else? Well, example, if I want to bring my estimate further down, maybe I need to think of say some new technology of production, maybe some new method of production, maybe some change of design in my product. For example, this pencil here, look at the length of the pencil, this long it is almost six inch long, six to seven inches long the pencil is. Now, if I want to cut some cost, if I want to do some cost reduction, I think of changing the design of the product. Say right now, I noticed that anyone who uses this pencil, anyone who will use this pencil, you notice that the top one inch, 
this top one inch of the pencil is of almost no use it is of no use because it is not even giving me hand support here it doesn't even contain the nib inside it's a clutch pencil the nib will be only this much long so this top one inch is almost of no use so what i thought was i told my product designers to come up with a new design of this pencil such that this length of the pencil is cut down by say half an inch I just planned to cut the length of this pencil by half inch now if I cut the length of this pencil by half inch it will save me some material cost if I cut the length by half an inch it will definitely save me some material cost that will eventually save me some total cost this kind of savings in cost will become my cost reduction yes so either change of design change of technology can give me that cost reduction look at the difference cost control from 25 to 20 if i had to decrease i did that by avoiding my mistakes but from 20 to 18 this decrease I will not be able to do by avoiding mistakes for that I need to think of say some new technology or maybe new design like this example I change the design of the pencil cut the length of the pencil that might give me some decrease in my estimated cost and look this decrease this decrease now by changing the design the decrease that I get don't you think it will be a more real and permanent decrease look the decrease that i got by avoiding mistake might be temporary this year i could avoid mistakes so my cost had a decrease next year i might again make that mistake then cost will increase but the decrease which i get by changing the design by changing the technology this will be a more real and permanent decrease as long as I keep producing the new design of the product I will keep getting the lower cost only it is a more permanent kind of decrease that is my cost reduction now your question would be that as a chartered accountant why are we supposed to learn these things well cost control is very obvious you have to learn so that you know where did the company go wrong give recommendation to change that things in the next year but cost reduction cost reduction happens only with the change of technology change of design as a chartered accountant are you supposed to discover new technology or new design well obviously not then why are you learning cost reduction well you are learning cost reduction because Yes, you are not supposed to discover new design or new technology. That is the job of engineers, the designers. But you need to guide those engineers and those designers for reaching cost reduction. Like for example, if I just tell the designer that I want to reduce cost, well, designer does not know that which is the main component of cost. I have to tell the designer that in this product, materials is the most expensive part. I told the designer that in this product material is the most expensive part so you think of a design where material used is less because of this information given by me hence the designer could come up with a new design plus every time the designer comes up with a new design I have to give cost estimate for that design that is the place where chartered accountants are needed that is why cost reduction is the job of chartered accountants only yeah anyways now just to give you better clarity there i'll discuss some case study here look occasionally wherever possible i will be discussing i will be sharing with you certain real life case studies that might uh, make the subject a little more interesting for you and it will help you to remember the concept easier like i told you cost control cost reduction is a very common theory i'll show you that later in the theory portions also clear cut differences are there right now i'm just orally describing the differences now to understand that I have two case studies for you. I have two particular case studies that I can share with you for that matter. <clears throat> okay, my first case that I discuss, the first case that I discuss that is about Colgate. 
you know the company toothpaste manufacturing yes now this actually happened in india somewhere in 1970s or so now 1970s that was a time where there were not many competitors in the toothpaste industry colgate was having almost a monopoly in the entire industry at least all those people in india who were using toothpastes were using colgate toothpaste only rest of them might be using those deti desi dant manjan types dabar lal dant manjan and all but uh, yeah colgate was having a, quite a monopoly in the toothpaste industry and major market share they were having now suddenly in one particular quarter in one of the years in one particular quarter when they published their quarterly results it was noticed that uh, <clears throat> the toothpaste sales of the company has massively increased in india the toothpaste sales had suddenly increased in one quarter suddenly increased now look toothpaste is a basically an item of fmcg industry you know fmcg fast moving consumer goods and uh, as an fmcg product they generally don't have major variations in the sales in the demand it will have almost consistent demand now suddenly when toothpaste sales increased then all the economists all the equity analysts who are analyzing the company performances and all they started wondering that suddenly suddenly how how come toothpaste sales increase suddenly like how come suddenly people start brushing teeth more often or suddenly the population of india increased well population can't increase suddenly but uh, what was the reason people were wondering the economists were wondering the equity analysts were wondering none of them could come to a conclusion that suddenly how come toothpaste sales increase but well after few months listen to this after few months it was declared it was found it was revealed that what had actually happened no it was not a mistake in calculation what had actually happened was some brilliant designer in colgate company some designer product designer in colgate company he was very brilliant what he did was he made some changes in the design of the tube not the paste but the tube from which the paste comes out what he did was say the nozzle of the tube from where the paste comes out that nozzle opening this designer simply increased that nozzle size by few millimeters he just increased the diameter of that nozzle by few millimeters think now what happens now if he has increased the nozzle size by few millimeters due to this now whenever you squeeze the tube then if the nozzle is bigger now when you squeeze the tube then more paste will come out now when more paste comes out eventually it is more consumption by the user and if it is more consumption by the user ultimately it will be more sales for the company you might feel that such a small 1 mm increase in the nozzle size such a small increase how much difference would it make but well think about it when almost uh, almost say 70 80 crore people in india if almost 70 80 crore chalo on a lower side 50 crore people in india are using that same toothpaste every single day and every single day 50 crore people start consuming that 1 mm more then overall impact on the company sales will be pretty huge yes it was pretty huge and it was visible in the quarterly numbers that we saw now yes you might say that it was ethically wrong yes it might be ethically wrong but look at the brilliance of the idea just by increasing nozzle size by few millimeters it gave tremendous increase in sales to the company that is a change of design that change of design in fact uh, at in this particular case let me be frank with you this was not the only factor due to which the sales increased another factor was also the kind of advertisements they show look tv viewers who see the advertisements customers like you and me 80% customers are dumb yes we are dumb 80% customers are dumb enough to follow exactly what they show in the tv advertisements itna dumb that they will exactly do jo tv advertisement mein dikhaya they in the tv advertisements they show that some very famous celebrity actor will come to um, do the advertisement of that toothpaste and he will wake up in the morning go to the washroom take the brush and notice this they have shown this in almost every toothpaste advertisement they show that you take the brush 
एंड यू पुट द पेस्ट थ्रू आउट दी लेंथ ऑफ द ब्रश पूरा ब्रश भर के पेस्ट निकाला वेल well, ब्लडी इतना इतना पेस्ट का जरूरत ही नहीं है यू डोंट नीड सो मच पेस्ट दे विल शो इन दर्टीजमेंट दैट यू पुट द पेस्ट थ्रू आउट द एंटायर लेंथ ऑफ द ब्रश दैट ऑल्सो इन दैट ब्लडी एस शेप अभी मेरी बात करूं तो एंड आई नो दैट अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग व्हेन आई वेक अप व्हेन आई गो टू द वॉशरूम टेक द ब्रश हाफ अ स्लीप हाफ माय पेस फॉल्स इन द सिंक पता भी नहीं होता पेस कहा जा रहा है बट इन दैट एडवर्टीजमेंट दे शो लड़ी पूरा एस शेप बना के लंबा सा पेस्ट निकालेंगे डू यू नीड सो मच पेस्ट नो फ्रेंकली इवन हाफ दैट अमाउंट ऑफ पेस्ट विल बी इनफ फॉर दैट स्मॉल माउथ यू हैव आई हैव इवन स्मॉल माउथ आई हैव इवन स्मॉलर टीथ देन जनरल सी यू कैन सी तो तो If there is so much less paste required, just because they show in the TV advertisements, people will actually follow that, and due to which there is more consumption and accordingly more sales by the company. This was one of the reason why the sales increased. But yeah, no matter you feel that it might be unethical to increase the nozzle size, ultimately it was a brilliant idea. Salute to that guy who came up with such brilliant idea. of course eventually government pressure came in and they tried to prevent the company from doing such uh, unethical things and uh, regulations were put in but theek hai one more case study i have for you one more case that i can describe and this case is exactly an example of cost reduction this case is for the bottling industry you know these mineral water bottles mineral water not any other bottles mineral water bottles the bottling industry has two stages one is the uh, process where they will make the mineral water second is the process where they will fill it up in the bottle my example is not about making the mineral water my example is about the make making of the empty bottle yes now this empty bottles that are made first let me tell you how are these bottles made that will be needed look um costing is a subject which i said is for internal management so my suggestion is that those of you who are doing article ship those of you who will be doing article ship i suggest that whenever you go for any new client tell the client to show his factory i have seen these things in the factories itself hence i am able to take that as an example now in the bottling industry the factory where the empty bottles are manufactured the process is like two stage process at stage 1 they will just make a small bottle say if the final bottle imagine if the final bottle looks like this say this is mineral water bottle don't think of anything else mineral water ka bottle if this is the final product but the bottle manufacturing does not directly produce this final product what happens is first they will produce a small bottle like this it's called as a pre form now this small bottle that they produce notice in this small bottle this neck part will be same as the final version same size but the body part here is small then what they do is in this small bottle that they manufacture they will put it in a machine and that machine will push hot air into that bottle the machine will push hot air into the bottle and because of the hot air the bottle the body of the bottle will expand and it will take the shape of the outside mold once it takes the shape of the outside mold it then appears like this this is how the bottle is manufactured now in this final version this you might have noticed that in this final version recently these mineral water bottles recently matlab since last 2 3 years okay 5 6 years these mineral water bottles have started having a shorter neck neck part has been cut down it has become shorter now some product designer who first came up with this design what he did was instead of having long neck bottles he cut the neck and made it a short neck bottles that short neck this change of design gave them almost 40% savings in cost it gave them almost 40% savings in cost earlier the bottle which was costing say 
rupee 1 empty bottle manufacturing cost now that manufacturing cost came down to say rupees 60 paisa 0.60 rupees only 60 paisa that is 40 percent savings in the cost you might say that 40 paisa is not a big deal is not 40 paisa think it is 40 percent savings in cost these industry might not even have 40 percent gross margin now if they could get 40 percent savings in cost it was a huge huge thing in the industry as of now the position is that almost every bottle manufacturer who are making these mineral water bottles they have all changed into the short neck design you can see the difference see the difference between mineral water bottle and say thumbs up pepsi coca cola bottle in that coca cola bottle when you open the bottle and then when you want to close the bottle you will have to rotate the cap at least two three times because it is a longer neck but the same thing in mineral water bottle if you want to lock the bottle half a rotation of the cap will lock the bottle have you noticed that only half a rotation of the cap will lock the bottle because it has a short neck now why did this give so much savings in cost well notice in this bottle design you might have seen this that the body of the bottle here is very thin plastic this entire body of the bottle is very thin plastic you can crush the plastic easily but but this neck part of the bottle is very thick plastic that neck part of the bottle is very thick plastic even if you crush with all your efforts it might not even bend because there is very thick plastic at the neck part there is a locking system there so they need more thicker stronger plastic there now what this designer thought was he just cut down the neck of the bottle he just cut down this neck of the bottle by few millimeters say two millimeters but what he cut was the neck part tell me if we cut the neck of the bottle does that change the storage capacity of the bottle no the storage capacity will still be full one liter but the neck part which was cut because of cutting the neck part it was uh, it cut down the part where maximum material consumption was there look that neck part was thick plastic because it was very thick plastic so So they might have analyzed that out of the total material consumed in making the bottle almost 60 percent material was consumed in the neck part itself rest of the entire body although it looks bigger but rest of the body consumes only 40 percent material only 40 percent plastic so 60 percent of the plastic was used only in the neck part because it was very thick plastic there and this designer just cut down the neck part by few millimeters naturally because of that there will be huge savings in the cost huge savings in the material cost itself well that gave them major savings in the total cost this is a clear example for change of design this is my clear example for the fact that new design will give you savings in cost new design will give you cost reduction and this example now you can see that this will be a permanent cost reduction as long as you keep producing the short neck bottle you will always have the lesser cost only yes or no yes so this is what is my cost reduction and in this particular example it was the job of the cost accountant it was the job of the chartered accountant or cost accountant to give this analysis this analysis came from you and me that is the reason why cost reduction we have to study certain chapters in our subject i'll tell you i'll show you is regarding cost control and cost reduction hence i'm covering that in my purpose of costing here and lastly the purpose is also decision making naturally variety of decisions we will be taking throughout the subject all that covers my purpose of the costing subject yes done okay well then going further along with the purpose of costing few more two more other things small things in the basics that i cover also you will keep writing that and start writing with this
now two important terms i need to explain to you one is cost unit other is cost center cost unit is basically what cost unit means the unit of measurement that i use to calculate my cost for example say if i am manufacturing these pencils then for these pencil how do i calculate cost i calculate cost per what will i calculate cost of this pencil in terms of per kg or per liter no it is a product such that i cannot measure this in terms of per kg i cannot measure this in terms of per liter how will i calculate cost of this well i'll calculate cost of this in terms of what in terms of say simply per piece per piece or per unit yeah what if i am into say steel industry if i'm into steel industry manufacturing steel then how do i calculate cost well in case of steel industry i shall calculate cost in terms of say per what in case of steel industry i'll calculate in terms of per kg or more rather better per not per kg but rather in terms of per ton because kgs will be a very small unit of measurement for steel i will rather calculate that in terms of say per ton what if i am manufacturing some chemicals some liquid say ink i am manufacturing then my cost will be calculated in terms of say per liter and chalo one last what if i am manufacturing cement cement manufacturing then in case of cement manufacturing i can calculate cost in terms of per kg or more likely i'll calculate cost in terms of not per kg i'll calculate in terms of what in terms of per bag yes in case of cement industry in case of cement industry my cost will not be calculated per kg it will be rather calculated in terms of per bag why so the so, well cement can be measured in terms of kgs yes cement can be measured in terms of bags also then why do i follow the measure of per bag while calculating a cost because cement is sold in terms of bags so look what unit of measurement should i follow depends on how the product is sold depends on now i'll write down depends on how that product is sold depends on how that product is sold so if cement is sold generally in terms of bags hence i'll calculate cost in terms of per bag because i will use this cost to decide selling price which is also per bag yeah so cost unit is the first thing that we need to learn before we start calculating cost of anything also what we need to learn is something called here as cost center cost center that i have written here is what well cost center means how i classify the cost method of classifying my cost say <clears throat> say for example if uh, if i am calculating cost of my product then in any manufacturing industry there might be hundreds of different items of cost in any manufacturing industry there might be hundreds of different items of cost that we incur now if there are hundreds of cost items that we incur how do i calculate the total cost well to calculate total cost i need to classify the cost on some basis because i cannot just simply add all these items of cost instead i need to do some classification classifications can be done in three ways there can be three different types of cost centers three different methods of classifying them which we will use in different different chapters in most of the chapters we will classify cost most of chapters most of the topics most of our calculations we will classify cost product wise it is called as it is called as product cost center product cost center means that my cost will be classified product wise product wise as in as in say for example i will classify my costs between product a 
product B, product C. I'll classify my cost between product A, product B, product C and whatever costs I have incurred during the year, whatever cost I have estimated for the year, I will classify them between product A, product B, product C. Which cost is incurred for product A, which is for B, which is for C and I will put them in respective columns, make totals in each column. In short, cost center means that while making calculation of total cost, how do I classify? Do I calculate total cost product wise then it is called product cost center or second I might calculate total cost location wise then it will be called as location cost center I might calculate cost location wise then it will be called as location cost center Say my company has for example two branches, I have one branch in Ahmedabad and one branch in Bangalore, then I might classify my costs location wise, I will find total cost of Ahmedabad branch separately and I will find total cost of Bangalore branch separately that will be called as location cost center and the third one. that you should also learn third one that you should also learn is called as department cost center where if my company does not have more than one products my company also does not have more than one branches then I might classify my costs department wise. I will separately find cost of say purchase department, separately I will find cost of say production department, separately I will find cost of sales department and so on. For every such department I will make separate column and find the cost separately that would become my department cost center. Anyways, in short these are the methods how I classify my cost. These are called as my cost center. Yeah. Okay. So these are the examples of cost center. These are the only three examples that are possible in cost center. Majority of the calculations we will do in different chapters will be the ones where we classify costs product wise. Product cost center it will be. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'll just give you a minute. You can copy that down. Then we will go on. further one last thing in my introduction after which I can introduce the different chapters to you in our subject is about is about methods of costing methods of costing Now as such there are two methods of costing like this notice <coughs> there are two types of industries based on which methods of costing will come two types of industries called as one called as order based industry other called as other called as continuous industry order based industry versus continuous industry now what is that order based industry means an industry where I will do production only after I receive a particular order from the customer order based industry is the one where I will do production only after I receive a specific order from the customer and based on his specific requirements I will make my product and deliver the product to him while continuous industry is the one where I will do production on my own without waiting for any specific order from the customer rather I will do production based on my own design based on general demand from the industry. Example say 
imagine as if uh, for example say you are getting married now if you are getting married you need to plan so many things about your wedding and all and uh, yes you'll have to get ready and all but um, one of the things you have to plan the first thing that you might have to plan is well yeah well the first thing that you might have to plan is to find a bride or groom but you know for boys if i tell you the first thing that you'll have to find after finding the bride is say you need to plan the dressing that you'll wear at the wedding say if you are getting married you wish that say you want to wear a nice sherwani now help me out where will you get a sherwani from well say those of you who are say virat kohli fan you might think uh, that chalo you'll buy the sherwani from manyavar you go to a ready made garment store like manyavar you go to the store and you search out the various uh, clothings that they have there and you pick up one of the sherwani that you like this clothing store manyavar this sherwani that you picked up from that store did the store make that sherwani specifically by your order no well the store had already made the sherwani before even you thought of getting married yeah so you are just going to the store and picking up whatever ready garments are there that store is running that store is doing business in terms of continuous industry ready made garments is continuous industry but say if you did not like the sherwani at manyavar store if you did not like the sherwani there then what will you do well then maybe you go to a tailor and tell the tailor to specifically make a sherwani for your purpose so if you did not like anything at the manyavar store you have some very particular specific requirements then maybe you go to a tailor chalo agar sochna hai to thoda bada soche forget tailor say you go to a fashion designer you go to a fashion designer and you tell him exactly what you want he will understand your requirements you tell him that which cloth you want which style do you want which design do you want everything you tell him him and accordingly he will design and stitch a sherwani for you then what the designer what that fashion designer is doing is in terms of order based industry so order based industry is the one where production is done after i receive a specific order from a customer while continuous industry production is done continuously based on general design based on general demand yeah so this is my first main difference over here i'll just write down you can also start writing <clears throat> okay now based on this one more another major difference here yes in case of order based industry if the production is done based on a specific order well that is why in case of order based industry <coughs> every product that i make will be different because look if i am the tailor you give me an order for stitching a sherwani then after your order the next person who gives me order for stitching a sherwani will that be of the exact same design no so generally as a tailor i will not be manufacturing more than two products of the same design 
I will not be manufacturing two or more products of the exact same design. That is why in case of order based industry, I can say that every product is unique, different. While in case of continuous industry, all units are identical. All units are identical. Why? Because all the units are produced by my own design. Say, when Manyavar people will make a Sherwani, will they make only one Sherwani of that design? No, they will make many Sherwanis of the same design. Of course, different sizes, but they will make many Sherwanis of the same design. Well, that is why I say that in continuous industry, all units will be identical. If I'm manufacturing these pencils, and during the year, if I manufacture say 1000 pencils, then don't you think each of that 1000 pencil will be of the exact same design, identical products, all units that you produce will be identical. And well, that is why, that is why in case of continuous industry and in case of order based industry, the cost calculation will also be in done in a different way. In case of continuous industry, Cost per unit calculated is calculated in a general way. Cost per unit calculation is general, that is that is say total cost divided by total units I can simply take total cost divided by total units will give me cost per unit during the year if I manufactured say total 1000 pens like this then I will just make a total of all the costs incurred throughout the entire year divided by 1000 pencils will give me cost per unit but tell me can the tailor or fashion designer do that can the tailor or fashion designer there do the same thing total cost of stitching all Sherwanis divided by total number of Sherwanis can he do that? No. Why not? Well, he cannot have a general cost calculation because in his business, because in his business, every product is unique. Every product is different. So in his business, what he needs to do is he needs to calculate cost per unit separately for every single order that he gets. For every order that he gets, he needs to separately find cost per unit, add a profit, set a selling price. If you give me order for stitching a Sherwani, then after that your friend gives me order for stitching a Sherwani, will I be quoting same selling price to both? No. I will not have a general selling price for all. I will not even have selling price decided at the beginning of the year. Rather, every time I get a fresh order, I have to study that order each time and decide a selling price for each order separately hence for each order i need to decide cost per unit also separately so cost has to be calculated separately for each order Cost has to be calculated separately for each order. That is the main speciality here. Now, certain chapters in our syllabus will be falling under order based industry. Certain chapters in our syllabus will be falling under continuous industry. I will show you the summary of all chapters in a while here so that you will understand what all chapters do we have and what will be learned in which chapters and all. Yeah. But as of now, I hope you understand this difference here that what is order based industry versus continuous industry <clears throat> order based industry where production is done after a specific order is received from the customer while continuous industry production is done continuously based on general demand order based industry every product that I produce will be unique will be different while continuous industry all products are identical and 
that is why in continuous industry cost per unit can be calculated in a general sense cost per unit is total cost divided by total units but in order based industry cost has to be calculated separately for every single order yeah anyways that is the methods of costing well based on that next we can learn about the different chapters in our syllabus different chapters and which chapter pertains to what uh, topic say i'll show that in the index page over here your first chapter is just basic introduction and cost sheet well what we have covered so far is the introduction part still continuing further some introduction i will show you and then we will learn something about cost sheet now cost sheet is cost sheet in my opinion is the prime basics of the costing subject it is the main primary basics of the costing subject based on that only you will learn the other things in the subject well it is not very likely that cost sheet question will come in the exam but it is very likely that if you don't understand cost sheet then you might not understand many of the things in these other chapters yeah so that is where i start from cost sheet <clears throat> Next, I will be covering the set of two chapters together. Consider these two chapters make up one set of chapters, budget and standard costing. Budget is the chapter where you make estimate, while standard costing is the chapter where you compare that estimate with the actual find where did you go wrong and analyze that what should you do next year to prevent that mistake. Meaning standard costing is the chapter where we will do cost control we learned about cost control standard costing is the chapter where we will be learning about cost control where we will compare actual costs with the estimate find the difference find the reasons for that difference yeah next three material labor and overheads these are the three main components of cost we said that you calculate total cost then divide by units but that total cost will contain three main components material labor and overheads what are these we will learn just uh, in today's session when we discuss about cost sheet but yeah we have a separate chapter dedicated to each of them and the seventh one activity based costing i would say is an extension of overheads chapter itself activity based costing is an extension of overheads chapter only so these four these four chapters i would say becomes one bunch of chapters together further process costing and joint products well process costing and joint products these two chapters are also a bunch of chapters together in fact these three chapters i would say let us make bunch of these three chapters together process costing joint products by products service costing these three are the chapters that we learn under continuous industry we just saw what was order based and continuous industry these are the three we learn under continuous industry what is there in these three chapters we'll see when we will start those chapters then chapter 11 and 12 unit costing job costing batch costing and contract costing these chapters cover many topics together but most of these topics most of them not all of them most of these topics pertain to order based industry so what is there in those chapters we'll see at that time chapter 13 is about accounting yes it is about accounting cost accounting systems well this is the chapter where whatever we will learn in costing subject we will put them in the form of journal entries so this chapter can be learnt only after learning majority of the other chapters because whatever cost calculations we learn in the costing subject then coming to the 13th chapter we will put those cost calculations in the form of journal entries we will put them in books of accounts which books of accounts why books of accounts that we will learn when we reach there yeah and the last one marginal costing look these last two chapters are not bunch of chapters these are individually separate ones last one marginal costing is 
one of the most important chapters in fact marginal costing is one of the most challenging chapters for many of the students and marginal costing is the chapter which is a background for ca final it is based on this marginal costing that many concepts in ca final costing you will learn yeah so marginal costing will be an important chapter not only for examination purpose at ipcc level even important as background for ca final level yeah these are all the chapters in your syllabus during my classes initially i will be focusing on mainly practicals but obviously before learning the practicals you will need some basic conceptual clarity so for every chapter that i start i will start with some concepts i will start with some basic theories like the ones that we did so far and then we will get into some calculations later by the end of the subject by the end of the syllabus last few sessions in my subject last few sessions we will be talking about theory the other theory well most of the theory will be covered during our practical discussions only but there are some other theories small weightage in your paper that last few theories will be covering up in the last few sessions of our subject so this will be your full content of the costing subject done okay okay then now based on that we will be then starting with the first chapter chapter number 1 which is about cost sheet okay now to learn this chapter first of all i need to cover still some basics certain basics about the costing subject itself the first set of basics that i start here is about cert certain types of classifications of cost types of cost yeah i'll just write down few things here you copy down first then we will discuss done <clears throat>
okay we'll discuss now for these types of cost i have two different classifications first is my classification based on element based on element we have material cost labor cost and other expenses material cost indicates all sorts of material that are used in my company now think if i am manufacturing this pencil it is a clutch pencil and you might be able to know that this is made of plastic now if i am manufacturing this plastic pencils then for my material cost what could be examples of material look all these classifications i will explain based on examples over here because well based on these examples you will be able to understand the nature of cost in a better way and once you understand the nature of cost then you can understand treatment of the cost yeah so first to understand the nature of basic costs items i'll give you some examples if i am manufacturing this pencil then material cost indicates what materials would indicate say this pencil is made up of plastic plastic becomes my material but this pencil contains yes plastic it contains say rubber at the top and rubber for the grip plus it also contains say lead inside so three main materials are used in making this product plastic lead and the rubber but apart from these three materials there are other materials also that are used in my factory there will be other materials also that are used in my factory but that are not directly used on this product think about it what other materials i will be using in my factory in my factory i didn't say on the product i said other materials that are used in the factory but not directly on this product think about it it will not be electricity because electricity is not material it is not power consumption because that is same as electricity but i need other materials look material is one classification here but this classification can be further divided as direct cost and indirect cost direct cost indirect cost or more likely direct material indirect material direct material means the material which is directly used on this product while indirect material will be the material that is not directly used on this product but it is still used in my factory indirect material will be those which are not directly used on the product but it is still used in the factory that would become indirect material now direct material indirect material both i'll explain with example direct material well for direct material i gave example that is say plastic and for indirect material say indirect material in my company i have some machines machines is not indirect material because machine is not even a material machine is a capital asset but these machines will require say regular repairing work regular repair and maintenance during maintenance for these machines i have to use say lubricants in the machine now these lubricants which are used in the machine is a material but am i using the lubricants directly on the product here no lubricants are not used on this product lubricants are used in the machine machine is used to make the product hence that lubricants will become my indirect material indirect material so indirect material example i'll write here as lubricants also say another example like uh, i have uh, a canteen in my company canteen is providing food to the employees who are working in the factory workers who are working in the factory now this canteen will order daily they will order some groceries fruits and vegetables and all now these groceries these fruits vegetables that the canteen is ordering is material but will i say it is direct material no do you see those fruits and vegetables on the product final product here do i see the fruits and vegetables on this pencil no obviously not fruits and vegetables are used in the canteen canteen is making food food is used by the workers workers are making the product hence that fruits and vegetables used in the canteen groceries ordered by the canteen will also become my indirect material yeah anyways um as of now right now i will just be giving you one example for each of the categories that i am giving one example will be enough to understand nature of cost 
other examples you will have when we will see the questions later in the book yeah okay so direct material indirect material we learned next labor now labor in my costing subject labor cost means all types of payments done to humans humans in my company human beings people so when i say labor in costing it does not mean only the bottom level workers it does not mean just the bottom level workers worker class in the company labor class in the company no when i say labor it covers all sorts of human efforts given in the company so say in my company even the most bottom level worker the salesman or the say sweeper in the company will become labor even managing director of the company falls under labor the wages that i pay to the sweeper and the salary that is paid to the managing director both will be called as labor cost yes so the word labor indicates all types of human efforts given in the company whether it is the human efforts given by the sweeper or whether it is by the managing director in case of reliance industries limited whether it is the wages and salaries paid to the sales agent salesman or whether it is a salary drawn by mukesh ambani himself in any case it will be called as labor and this labor also in costing can be direct labor versus indirect labor direct and indirect direct labor means the labor cost which is directly related to the product direct relation to the product while indirect labor will be the labor cost that is not directly related to the product example say for direct labor i'll write example as my factory workers the workers who are working in the factory the workers who are working in the factory that will become my direct labor while indirect labor will be whom indirect labor will be those who are not directly associated with making the product but they are still required in my company say for example security guard i have a security guard at my factory gate does that security guard directly make my product here no but that security guard is securing the premises premises in which other workers are making this product yeah so salary paid to that security guard will become my indirect labor and the third element of cost third main element of cost that i give you here other expenses other expenses means anything other than material and labor it might be electricity expense it might be say water consumption it might be say rent paid for anything it might be say uh, maybe some commission paid or royalty paid all that will come under other expenses yes now this other expense can also be direct versus indirect however when i say direct other expenses for direct other expenses there are very few examples in fact it is very rare it will come it will rarely come in any question but still it is possible i'll give you just one example for that say royalty royalty paid for production imagine if i am manufacturing this pencil using some technology but that technology was not discovered by me that technology was invented by you you invented some technology you are fulso gwangdu o3 oh, idiots wala you have patented so many technologies and all so many designs and all and if i am manufacturing this pencil as per your patented technology then i have to pay royalty to you this royalty that i pay will be called as production royalty i will have to pay you that royalty for every single unit that i manufacture using your design well that kind of royalty called as production royalty it is paid for producing this each product well that might be falling under that might be called as direct other expenses direct expenses that i can call as direct expenses so for direct expense i'm using example as this production royalty while for indirect expenses there can be thousands of examples simplest example say rent if i pay rent for my factory 
that is not directly related to the product but it is still necessary to pay in order to run my production so factory rent or any such type of rent rent will become my indirect cost <clears throat> is that fine yes i hope these examples would help you understand all the different types of costs in a better way done we'll go on yes okay still there is two more classification names that i need to give you i've already written them look here <clears throat> two more names that you need to know first you understand then you can copy down two more names that you need to know one is called as prime cost other is called as overheads prime cost is the name given to the total of all direct costs all the items of direct costs total is called as prime cost so direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses that total will be called as prime cost well for our easy reference i will just use short names for that direct material now will become dm direct labor becomes dl direct expense will be de look these short forms are all standard short forms you can use them in the exams also and i will be using these short forms in my further explanations and prime cost accordingly i will call as pc not priyanka chopra that is prime cost overheads is another name you need to know overheads will be the total of all indirect costs total of all items of indirect costs i will name that as overheads i will call that as oh overheads which means indirect material plus indirect labor plus indirect expenses expenses means other expenses now you already know the examples of all those items so i'll just use the short names like this indirect material i will call as idm indirect labor will become idl and indirect expenses other expenses will become ide so the total is now called as overheads oh now overheads is a very important uh, part of your subject in fact you had noticed that you had a separate chapter entirely dedicated to overheads now why do you have an entirely separate chapter only for overheads well i'll tell you that when i start the overhead chapter as of now you just needed to know that overheads means all items of indirect cost these overheads can be further classified as factory overheads admin overheads selling and distribution overheads now this classification of overheads is basically based on where that overheads is incurred factory overheads the word factory overheads would mean that the indirect cost is incurred inside the factory premises admin overhead here would mean that the indirect cost is incurred for routine administrative purpose like accounting and admin work and selling and distribution overheads would mean that the <clears throat> that the indirect cost is incurred for either sales or distribution example now i'll give you example for each of the indirect item like indirect material well earlier i gave you example of indirect material as lubricants you tell me lubricants if if lubricants is example of indirect material if lubricants is example of indirect material then where would that lubricants fall factory admin or selling overheads according to my example where was that lubricants used lubricants were used where it was used inside the factory lubricants was used in the machines machines are used in the factory so yes lubricants as an example would become lubricants is example of indirect material more precisely further classification it will fall under factory overheads but chalo some more what about uh, indirect material used for admin work think of an example of again indirect material other than lubricants some other indirect material other than lubricants some other indirect material that is used for routine admin office accounting work well 
you might say that for routine admin work you might need stationary items stationary items like say pens and pencils and erasers and all in the office or say stationary items like say printing ink printing cartridge printing pages for printing invoices and all all such stationary items stationary items i will say will fall under indirect materials of admin so i'll call that as admin overheads stationary items and selling and distribution think about materials that are used for selling or distribution well materials used for selling and distribution simplest example i will say packing material packing material the carton boxes the tapes and the say uh, ropes and all which you are using to pack the material pack the fin finished goods into boxes and all that boxes and tapes and uh, ropes and all will fall under packing material packing material is not required for production it is required for selling that comes under selling and distribution over it's packing material you know these were your indirect materials similarly indirect labor well for indirect labor i gave you example of security guard now if indirect labor example was security guard where would that fall in my classification here security guard will that fall as factory overheads or admin overheads or selling overheads well think logically it can fall in either one of them for example if that security guard is at the factory gate then his salary will become factory overheads if that same security guard is put in accounting office then his salary would become admin overheads and if that security guard is put at the showroom then his salary would become selling and distribution over it yes or no yes so the same security guard wages or salary can fall under either three of either of those three depending on where is it incurred and similarly indirect expenses i had given you example about rent now if indirect expense example was a rent that can also fall under any of the three rent of the factory will become factory overheads rent of the admin office will become admin overheads and rent of the showroom will become selling and distribution overheads do you understand that yes these are my major elements of cost these are my main items of cost based on which we will be learning the different methods of adding up the cost and ultimately making a cost sheet so now based on this my next discussion will be to make a cost sheet cost sheet is a format in which you will calculate a total cost cost sheet is a format of calculating total cost <clears throat> now to calculate that total cost you need to first classify the cost under different ways these are the classification we will use in fact out of this entire classification out of this entire classification let me tell you that for my cost sheet purpose in my cost sheet i will be using only six items of cost out of all these things that i showed you i repeat in my cost sheet i will be using only six different items of cost out of all these things that i have shown you which six items will i use notice in my cost sheet what i will use will be direct material direct labor direct expenses factory overheads admin overheads and selling and distribution overheads so ultimately these six items of cost tell me if i consider these six items the direct cost as direct material direct labor direct expenses first three items and factory overheads admin overheads selling overheads these last three items then don't you think that these six items eventually cover all components of cost that i gave you here yes these six items are covering all the components of cost that you saw here ultimately these six items i will add them together and make a total cost that method of finding total cost that format of finding total cost will be called as the cost sheet format of course that cost sheet format is not just simply adding all these items in that cost sheet format we need to make many other subtotals and i'll give you certain other calculations also in between that will be my next discussion but that i will start in my next session
yes so for now this was the end of my lecture one this is what i cover in my basics next session onwards we will start with the format of cost sheet and we will start learning calculations in that and we'll also start with questions of cost sheet done yes that's all for now thank you very much thank you very much see you in the next session that's all